Now, now you, uh, you mentioned rehab a little while ago, and you confirmed that you went to rehab through a joke. Right, yeah. Is there anything that's off limits in comedy when it comes to stuff No, like that? not at all. That's, the, that's one of the beauties of uh, comedy. It's like music, too. You could just heal through pain and stuff. And, like, it's really sad and depressing to go to rehab, but, like, if you could get a little crackle or a little joke out of it, then, like, it's, it's less painful. You know what I mean? Like, to stay there maybe wasn't as bad. If that makes sense. The last episode of SNL, I, I think it was with uh, it was with Eddie Murphy. The last one I saw. Yeah, you yeah. said it. All, you said on that episode, I'm, yeah. I'm going to rehab now. Yeah, yeah. I subliminally kind of said it because I figured it would get out because yeah. they. So I just tried to like cover my own ass just to be like I got ahead of you. Page six. I don't think it's anything wrong with with that though. Like if you know you need some yeah. assistance every now and then, what's the problem? I'll be back. Like I just go like I have to get my meds readjusted all the time because I have like. Bi in between bipolar and borderline and like B uh, PTSD and shit from my childhood. So like, you know, I have to go and get readjusted every once in a while. So like, I don't think going to rehab is that big of a deal. I think it's like a really strong, powerful thing. And some of the most beautiful, cool people you ever meet are there. Oh, well, I think that's the misconception, right? Some people think when you check into rehab, it's always for drugs. Yeah. But it's not always for drugs. It's not always so, for drugs. I mean, am I, do I do drugs? Absolutely. But I'm not like fucking falling over myself and all that shit. I just have like, some people are sad. Some yeah, people yeah, gotta yeah. work and figure their stuff out. And the beautiful thing about rehab is like it gets you sober so they can figure out what the problem is. Like some people can smoke weed and drink when they get out. It's like it's just you have to be sober for a certain amount of time so they can diagnose you properly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Have you been sober long enough for them to diagnose you properly? Yeah, I, was at, I, went, to, I went to two places because like one place got out a little bit and I, I didn't want to like, you know, disturb the people there. So we went to another place and we got like two and a half, three weeks of full sobriety and uh, that was cool. And uh, they readjusted my shit and I've been feeling great. How do you know when it's time to, to go get help? Like, okay, I'm doing too much. Usually when I start like cutting or like when shit gets like just, when it just gets a little insurmountable or like people are like, hey, my friends will tell me now. We're at a point where like people will come over and be like, hey, you gotta fucking, we're all fucking pissed and terrified. So we, not pissed, but like we're all like worried so you should go. I got, I got a good group around me where they, they give a fuck. What does cutting look like? I cut my chest. Uh, that's, so I, that's why I started getting tats uh, on my chest is to like cover them. Uh, it's just like a release. It's just something that like, uh, it's, if you can't get a tattoo or like if you can't, it's never in like any like spot that's like uh, serious. It's just like, it's, it, it, whenever you're so manic and upset, Sometimes that's like the only thing that would work for me. But now I like, you go to rehab, you learn like, oh, you could like take a cold shower, you could work out, you could listen to music really loud, you could read this excerpt, you could go on the Calm app, the, you can call a friend, mm -hmm. you can wait five minutes. There's just, you know, so much shit you learn that is like eked into your brain if you get to do some of that stuff. So like, um, you know, that's how I've been taking care of it. 